Hi guys, welcome to the Human and the Machine Crypto channel. Today we have a very interesting panel that is going to for sure answer a lot of questions about DeFi 2.0. So if you ever wanted to know how to get these insane yields, you're not alone because we're about to go into the latest and greatest of DeFi. Let's do it. Stay with us. Hi guys, so welcome to this panel. It's a really interesting one. With us is Luigi Dionorio. The email. How are you doing, Luigi? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So you are the head of DeFi at Ava Labs. Is it Ava or Ava Labs? Uh, Ava Labs. Ava. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Excellent. Uh, great having you. Uh, also, Cryptofish, co founder at Trader Joe. How are you doing, Cryptofish? I'm doing fantastic. It's a nice nickname, by the way, man. I like it. <laughs> and uh, old friend of ours, Gregor Arn, CEO of Verso. How are you doing, Greg? Very well, thank you. Yeah, likewise. And guess what? I think we're all here for a common reason. We're all very much vested in the blockchain space, DeFi space. And all of a sudden, we have this new like DeFi 2.0 coming up. It's still quite a mystery for a lot of people. So we really want to, you know, dive in and figure out how people can uh, participate. Yeah. 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 What's the difference between DeFi and DeFi 2.0? Because now I, I already have a count of 3.0. <laughs> so I would like to know what was the difference or what changed from zero to, to one, from one to two. Uh, I don't know. Luigi, could you, could you sh shine some light on this issue? I'd say in general, it's not very well defined, but um, some of the things that, are more closely aligned with DeFi 2.0 are these uh, Olympus DAO type of um, tokenomics, right? Where you are essentially incentivizing the community to continue to hold on to tokens, uh, continue to stake them, and continue this virtuous cycle rather than you know traditional models that are revenue generating or fee generating, um, as you saw more in DeFi 1.0, right? Or more governance tokens like or Uniswap or, or Aave. Um, you know, I think DeFi 2.0 kind of mends a CRV type token with these new bonding type mechanisms that you see in Olympus. And uh, CryptoFish, what's happening, uh, you know, DeFi 2.0 in, in Trader Joe? Could you, could you tell our community about it? One of the biggest things that's come out of DeFi 2.0 is this idea of protocol earned liquidity or POL. And that's actually a really cool idea. The idea is that, you know, instead of um, every other user owning liquidity, the protocol owns its own liquidity. And that's very important because then you don't have to, um, you don't have to incentivize with yield and basically rent out your uh, liquidity in, the, in, for, in exchange for um, incentives. It's important that we own not all of it. I think it's technically impossible to own all of it, but we can try and own as much of it. So starting with the Joe AVAX pool and then moving on to the other big pools like AVAX USDC, AVAX USDT. Um, you know, if we can own significant parts of that, then we don't have to incentivize, you know, large whales to come and add liquidity now onto our decks. Okay. It makes sense, right? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, no, protocol and own liquidity. Um, I hear about this a lot. So mm -hmm. definitely pretty revolutionary once you wrap your head around it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gregor, I would like to hear from you. You know, what's your take on how you see DeFi 2.0? Yeah, I, I think um, aside from the protocol owned liquidity and that, I think um, I'd probably um, see much more um, evolution broader, right? So like, I think DeFi in that sense, 1.0 has brought... Uh, let's say some basic use cases, uh, we've seen DEXs, we've seen lending, borrowing, etc. Um, but I think DeFi 2.0 will, on one end, like solve the shortcomings that DeFi 1.0 had. Um, but I personally expect much more in DeFi 2.0 that is also tailored towards the users. Um, so in terms of, you know, in terms of education, in terms of integrating, uh, making it easier for beginners, for no, non-crypto natives, um, I think that's also going to be a big topic in DeFi 2.0. And together with that, also the entire, um, um, the entire convergence between traditional finance and DeFi in general. I mean, we are really in a process of discovery, aren't we? 
because uh, I see a lot of different uh, protocols like starting, they do well, they run into troubles and, and a lot of them, they just disappear. Do we see this year as the year that this is finally eradicated from DeFi 2.0 or are we still going to suffer this kind of uh, growing pains? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to suffer growing pains for like a decade, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> no. You know, oh, that's way too long. <laughs> no. Yeah. Guys, guys, it, we're super, 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 super early here in terms of the primitives, right? Like uh, DeFi 2.0 has this really cool name, um, you know, like that it's really like total, completely built, but really it's changed a few primitives um, and a few ways that DeFi is being looked at. Uh, I think there's so much more that hasn't yet been discovered as it relates to these types of things. I mean, I think there's a lot of exploration, a lot of eyes closed and feeling around. Um, and then, you know, I think it's going to take us some time here, right? Like DeFi is maybe a two-year-old primitive, you know, in comparison to traditional finance, which is hundreds of, hundreds of years old. You know, I don't want to put a damper on the excitement of DeFi 2.0, but I, I think it's important that people understand that this is very, very early. It's an improvement in tokenomics. Um, it's an improvement in, ter in terms of a mechanism, but DeFi is, still needs to interact with the real world. That would be two, DeFi 2.0 in my mind. We have people watching us, right? And uh, we want people to join in and to to take place in, uh, you know, to take part in all these. But for example, one thing that happens in, in DeFi 2.0 is that tokens that you get rewarded, those amazing yields, sometimes they crash, right? Like the value crashes to zero. So how can we get people to stay engaged while we keep like evolving? What do you think, CryptoFish? Isn't, isn't that the part of the attraction though? Like, <laughs> I, I personally think Crypto compared to four years ago, there's, you know, there's something to cater to different types of investors now. Like obviously there's still the very degenerate investing, like super high yields, APYs in the millions. Uh, but now there's like products where you can, you, know, you can earn quote unquote safe yields and not worry about it and not have to manage it for so much of the time. And, you know, I think. People do that through centralized exchanges. Like you can deposit, I think, uh, USD on FTX and lend it out and you can make decent yield on that. I think, yeah, I think in general, it will, it will get more diversified in the future. And I think it's good for the industry that they don't um, completely remove that kind of volatile game because to be honest, that's part of the fun of crypto, I think. That's why a lot of people love it, right? Yeah, high, high risk, extremely high rewards, right? Guys, you all belong to the Avalanche uh, ecosystem. How is it to, to, to be exploring the 2.0 DeFi in the Avalanche ecosystem? Uh, from what you can see, the difference between Avalanche and, and uh, other blockchains. Um, but I would say that in terms of developing in Avalanche, you know, Gregor would know, like when we first started, you know, back in June, it was such a, it was, it's just so different to what it is now. Like, it's pretty amazing to see actually. Um, back then it was such a small ecosystem and, you know, we were all, it's just like, it didn't seem like anything was going on in Avalanche. And, um, you know, we barely even had the infrastructure. There wasn't, there wasn't even any chain link oracles then. Uh, but now, like, you know, you have all this cool stuff coming out and it just seems like every every week there's new things coming on. Yeah, I think those gas fees have definitely pushed people to innovate elsewhere. Yeah, right. Sure. Actually, it has. Uh, it, it, this has been the reason why we came, why we started in Avalanche, uh, you know, to build natively on Avalanche in the first place. I mean, we had not like planned to go into crypto two, three years ago. Um, and as things happened, um, we needed uh, something that is future proof to do. Like we are very microfinance focused, right? So we needed for us, these gas fees, scalability is fundamental. Um, and that's actually what got us very attracted in Avalanche. And this is also where I like, like, you know, where I'm personally super passionate about is microfinance in general. What's your take on Avalanche, Luigi? Really, there were three fundamental things that came together at the right time. <clears throat> One was the new bridge we deployed to Ethereum, the Avalanche Bridge, which is great UX and cheapest bridge that exists out there. 
Uh, that combined with uh, lending, uh, I, think, I think Banky was the first to deploy lending on Avalanche or lending and borrowing, which allows credit to flow into DeFi. And the last was Avalanche Rush, which was our incentive program, which created, you know, a, a, almost gave people a reason to come over and try, right? In terms of whether it's DeFi 1.0, 2.0, 37.0, I think in general, we're continuing to innovate with uh, new primitives, right? I think uh, Trader Joe recently launched their Rocket Joe uh, product, which is something that I haven't seen yet in DeFi, frankly. So that's, and that's what I keep telling everybody in the ecosystem. The next Aves, Uniswaps, et cetera, need to come from Avalanche if we were to succeed. That really is interesting because, you know, we've basically been here since the inception of DeFi. Mm. And I've always thought that DeFi was forever decentralized, you know, no regulation. But mm. what you said probably does make sense in terms of practicality. So, and, and there's nuances, right? Like decentralized in what sense? Well, you know, I'd like to use, you know, like Aave as a good example. But the ability to deposit money into a protocol and borrow it from a protocol, right? It could mean that Goldman Sachs is borrowing money from Bank of America without knowing that Goldman Sachs is borrowing money from Bank of America. That doesn't exist in traditional finance. So it's still a major improvement from the existing market infrastructure. And, um, you know, that's, I, I think, can't be undermined. That's, that's, that's a, it's a huge deal, frankly. I do have a question. Um, definitely, I think this cycle is different because it really is based on products and even more community. When I hear DeFi 2.0, like DAO governance is a highly correlated term, right? So I do want to hear you guys' thoughts on where you think this is heading, because I have my own opinions, but I do want to hear from you. Yeah, I think this is probably the next area of exploration in DeFi. I think we've started to do it uh, as it relates to some of these own forks and, and whatnot. Uh, and, and I think what we quickly realize is like, you know, um, DAOs are, you know, DAO just by name is not really that exciting. Uh, however, if there's a if there's a DAO that has a really good use case uh, and actually has built really good governance tools, then it could be really, you know, powerful. Yeah, I, I think the DAO thing is as complex, if not more complex, than getting DeFi properly grounded. Yeah, I was reading an article too, and it's really interesting. It's like we're almost going back to the Greek ages mm. where everyone's, you know, think direct democracy is the next big thing. No, <laughs> we go into representative democracy. So I feel that it's going to be the same thing for DAOs. I mean, one thing I will say, and, and I generally agree with you, uh, I've always had that approach, but like um, we do have tools uh, with this, with, with crypto and blockchains that we never had that should allow us to move closer to democracy than we were before. Look, we did start 2022. We're still early on. How do you see DeFi evolving? Will we jump to DeFi 3.0? Not fast. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I would like to hear from uh, all of you. So CryptoFish, what's your take? Just to echo what Luigi said, DAO, DAOs are still an area of, of massive experimentation. Uh, so I personally think, you know, DeFi 3.0, we're still going to see more iterations of DAOs, and that's a good thing. There's definitely a lot of work that needs to be done there. Um, tokenomics innovations, I think this will continue to be a thing forever. I personally think, uh, you know, NFTs is actually a really huge market. Um, one of the interesting things about NFTs is that they're still lacking a certain economy slash utility around them. You know, with ERC-20 tokens, you can swap them, you can lend them, you can borrow them, you can yield farm with them, you can leverage with them. With NFTs, you can swap them, you can yield farm with them, but there's still a lot of things you can't do with them. You can't lend them, you can't borrow them. Um, I think that this will be a huge uh, area of innovation this year. Uh, Gregor, what's your take? Tell us what's coming in the future. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I mean, I think to what has been said already to add to that. I mean, yes, NFTs are super exciting and all of that, but I think really the the, the kind of the real power of, of all these these tools or these basic use cases we have built now, and the real power comes when you when you connect it to real world use cases, right? Tra traditional finance or to whatever it is out there. And I think the combination of um of real world products traditional finance with what we have now is going to be very big 
And that's what I'm very bullish about in the next years. And We're on finally, the same page. Yeah. Yeah. And Luigi, finally, please. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's, uh, it's really the integration of DeFi in the real world. Uh, I think DeFi has built some really cool primitives, uh, which allow us to kind of like explore. But like until, you know, my mom is, be, is able to like, you know, borrow in DeFi you know, seamlessly, um, you know, it's just a niche area until then. Guys, uh, any final words before we wrap up? Uh, just thank you guys for having us. Um, you know, look forward to continuing to talk about DeFi and, 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 and you know, Web3 as it relates to kind of how it can impact people's lives going forward. And Avalanche as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Luigi. Uh, Greg, any final words, buddy? Uh, Luigi has pretty much said everything that is to be said. Yeah, super excited to be here. Thanks a lot for having us. And um looking forward to what's next thank you greg cryptofish yeah really um excited to and happy to share the stage with luigi and gregor i feel like uh it's, it's kind of funny we just been through you know this entire journey together for the past amazing well thank you very much guys for your innovation for your drive for your ideas and for being with us today take care see you bye guys bye bye so bro what do you think yeah, look, I think um, it, it's like history almost repeating itself. Mm, yeah. DeFi 2.0, 3.0, even 37, as Luigi said. Amazing, right? I think we'll just continue to see, you know, new protocols come up, new incentives. Mm. But it's like what's really amazing is everyone's pushing yeah. at literally every single sector to just come up with something new, building on the previous. Yeah, you, you know, something that, that caught my attention is that, like you said, everyone, we keep hearing subnets, but but they touch so many points, so many challenges that with other people in other interviews, with our, uh, our guests, right? They are actually resolving those challenges that they were mentioning. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was like, mm. so, so it's like you said, is everyone is pushing from every side. So somehow we will land in a, in a good place. Yeah, so look, I think we got to come back and talk about this in three months' time because the whole yeah. landscape is going to be completely different. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have to do one about Web 3.0. Oh, yeah, that's a whole that, new that, topic. That's really important. Yeah, Metaverse too. Yeah, yeah well, okay. Yeah. Machine, we have a lot of things to do. Of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, stay tuned. Yeah, comment down below. What DeFi 2.0 protocols are you using? We'd like to know. Yeah, interesting. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See ya.